So person 114, your, your reading starts in, I see you, the version of you, in human form, and I see around your human arms, I see these big wings, these big white wings, and I see your hands and your arms underneath these wings. So I see you bend your arms at the elbows, and your hands are up above your head, and so these wings are making this L shape up above your head. And as soon as that happens, it's like you get propelled up this tube, this vertical vessel, and this vertical vessel has all of these white, rings around it and it's like you're being shot like a rocket straight up and it's and it's really fast and I see you like flying your wings are above your head and as soon as you get propelled out through the top of it I see this lush landscape this scenery kind of take form underneath you and it's like an aerial view and it's you're this bird now soaring and there's this beautiful like earth-like landscape underneath you but it's super colorful and lush and um, and it's interesting because your face is very stoic. You're very focused. It's like you have laser like focus on something. It's like you're searching for something. Um, and and typically when I see people flying like this, they have a very joyful, happy, carefree manner. But you are very focused and you're looking for something. And it's very kind of like military ops feeling. Like I feel like you are searching on the hunt for something. So all these gridded lines start to take shape over the landscape below. And it now. I'm getting even more feeling like you're supposed to be looking for something or there's this place something we're searching for and so as um, as you keep soaring in this straight line scanning the entire surrounding I feel like you're the one controlling this you finally find it whatever you're looking for and your wings go back up in that L shape over your head and now you start to descend straight down in a vertical line your body's like head up feet down towards this landscape and, um, and you start descending down and like every five seconds I get this dark flash, like everything goes dark around you, but what pops out is this like golden halo above your head and then it'll flash back to the scenery and then it flashes again and it does this like 10 times before you hit the ground. So as soon as you hit the ground, everything's black. It's like thick, thick, dense blackness and I would personally associate some kind of fear, like we're going into um, something that's uh, offers like a discomforting feeling I'm not sure but you again hold this stoic laser light focused face and so you're searching and I see your wings come down and under your wings are your fingers and so you as you're walking through this dark black like forest dish landscape you're you're looking and you're picking and choosing things and so you walk up to like what looks like a big rock or stone and it's like you touch it with your finger and as soon as you touch it this golden kind of light illuminates it and this like person comes they almost like uncurl out of this rock shape and they become like a person and I don't get any details or visual of this person but I know it's a person because I see this like yellow hair flip back and so from here, then you walk and you're searching again, straight face, stoic face, no movement, no motion, nothing attached, and you touch something else and it comes to life and it's, I see the hair flick up again and it comes to life and it starts to follow you. And so from here, you collect like, I don't know, 20, 25, 30 of these people. And then finally, it's like you're done collecting these people. So you turn around and and um, and you look at these people and you're still in this blackness and there's this light of people behind you and I feel like there's some like you're the leader they're the followers I feel like somehow you're helping them I feel like you're it's almost like very military style like you're the general they're the soldiers following you they'll do whatever you say it's almost robotic it's um, it's interesting there's no emotion there's nothing to it and so from here then you turn around and it's almost like Roger Rabbit now where we we completely change landscape and you turn around and there's like this technicolored landscape again and so as you move through it's almost like this veil you move through this almost like portal but it's not there's nothing but I mean it's just from darkness to light you move from darkness to light and go into this new landscape and as you transition through it's like you and all the followers who are with you turn into these like happy joyful I see you like playing and um, and everybody's like congregating and playing together. You're all, you all have like angel wings and you're flying and everything's just happy and colorful. And it's like, everybody's on the same level. There's no more like superiority. There's no more leader follower. It's like, everybody's equal. So there's this huge shift in whatever happens from this dark place to this light place. 
And so from here, I see this ship come. And so um, this big ship, wooden like pirate looking ship comes down and picks you up. And so now I know we're transitioning to the next part, which is kind of explaining more about you. So when I see the ship, this is like your vessel. This is now kind of you in the story. So aboard the ship, you're driving, I see you with this really big smile on your face, and it's like, all right, you're at the wheel, you're driving this thing. So we take off into the universe, and we're just surrounded by all of these stars, and, um, and we start angling the ship towards the moon. And so I get a feeling we're being like pulled into the moon, like a gravitational pull. And we get right up to the moon and we're standing there and you get away from behind the wheel and you go right up to the edge of the ship and you stand there with your arms dropped and you're like opening your body up to the moon. And as soon as you do, the ship basically like like disappears it like gets sucked down into the blackness of the abyss of the universe and it's just you in front of this moon and so moon to me symbolizes change it's like life cycles um and later i from what i saw in a few minutes it's emotion and so the fact that the vessel that which is kind of your to me, the ship is symbolizing your body, your human form, your human self, the physical here in this world. So the fact that that drops away and leaves you in the presence of the moon, which is symbolizing change, I'm um, I'm maybe getting a feeling that um, it's either happening to you or you're being called to look into the it's like letting go of the physical body and and it's almost as if you're being called to action if you're not already to step up into this next up uh, this next phase of your existence and it's like you're taking on now the next phase of your journey and and so I'm getting this call to action that you're elevating and I would have to say that there's maybe a spiritual tie to it and later I realize I think that we're maybe elevating from this consciousness level of the physical into the emotional body and so um, what happens next, the ship, as I get this information, the ship comes back underneath you, it grounds you again, and you now are behind the wheel steering the ship and you turn directly towards the moon and you fly right through it. And as you move through the moon, your body turns into this luminescence. It's almost like um, the look of like an opal or if you were to be dipped in like glitter or stardust or something so your body as you move through the moon it like takes on this shape and to me that's energy to me that's like um that maybe symbolizes the um the energetic connection to the moon so i would also be interested to see what your moon sign would be and um that sometimes symbolizes the hidden self um in astrology so if you have your birth chart to look to see what your moon your moon sign is and and see what that says about you but um then you, you're behind the wheel again, so you're taking us to the next phase of this journey, and, and you go now in front of the sun. And so as you pull up in front of the sun, you stand in front of the sun, and the ship stays underneath you, and it's like you are just loving the power, the energy, the intensity of the sun. It's like it is coming into you. It's filling you. And so I'm immediately pulled. Sun symbolizes, to me, the solar plexus chakra. It symbolizes the mental body. It symbolizes symbolizes willpower and strength and energy and vitality and all of these things and so I am now getting that maybe from the symbols that we've seen and what I saw down below when you were with those people in the darkness I'm getting a pull that maybe you <clears throat> have and I'm feeling this very like um this very so I'm pulled back to the people and you're a leader and you're helping a lot of people but now I'm getting that there is maybe a um a uh, connection that you've maybe m missed in the emotional body and you're into the um, mental body and so I'm getting that maybe there is a connection that the the physical body and the mental body are very powerful very strong but there's something maybe that needs to be looked at in the emotional body which is the moon symbolizing this emotional body and so from here um, you're like drinking in this power and I see it just filling you and empowering you even more so I'm 
I'm getting that you are very full of this like life force energy, right? So um, no problem there. And so from here, now we get back on the ship and now I see us heading towards the Rainbow Road, which is gonna take us to your Akashic Records. And so as you get on the Rainbow Road, you actually bring the ship into the Rainbow Road like it's a, a river that we're following. And so you are so excited that you get to the bow, I think that's the front of the ship, and you jump off into the Rainbow Road and you start swimming like free arm, what is that, freestyle arm over arm, you swimming like intensely, like you have so much power, like let's just go, I want to get there. So you're swimming up river in this Rainbow Road towards the door, and I see this big black like um, um, obsidian looking carved door and so you get all the way to the door and now I'm following you and I'm right behind you and you're at this door and you like you just had this great exercise swimming up the stream and you get to this door and you or re you reach for the handle and it's locked and you're reaching in your pockets and you don't have the key and you like look at me and you're like oh the key's back on the ship and you're like oh, I forgot the key so you swim all the way back to the ship you get the key and this time you pull the ship up and and you jump off and you get onto this platform that holds your door to the Akashic Records. And so you have the key, you open it, and as you walk in, now it all, the inside of your Akashic Record is this beautiful garden. Again, it's like lush gardens, and I see like butterflies flying around. And as we get deeper kind of into this lush green kind of landscape, I see that there's these big green hedges. And you look at me and you're like, Oh, and I know it's a maze. I know it's one of those landscaped hedge mazes. And you look at me and you're like, oh, I forgot the way. And so now I'm connected, or you said, I can't remember how to get there. And we're trying to get into the center of this maze. And you're looking at me like, I can't remember. And so <clears throat> I'm getting a connection now between you forgetting the key to get into this. Um, the Akashic Records represents like your connection to the divine, your connection into the spirituality, and, and your connection into the all that is of your 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 soul's existence so you forgot the key and now you can't remember basically kind of how to get home so I'm getting a very strong tie to this um, remembrance of like your divinity and whatnot so we um, as soon as I I make that connection for you like everything the landscape changes the hedges are gone and basically everything's just completely open to you and so you run into the middle of the sanctuary and you're like just enjoying being amongst basically your energy your your highest power your highest divinity in this in this sanctuary and so I call down your higher self and I ask your higher self to come down and I say what's for the greatest good for this person to know at this moment in time and your higher self basically looks at me and says she is so destined to help so many people and she is right where she needs to be she's doing amazing work and then they they look at me and I say okay so what she needs to know and um, and they say that there is a disconnect and that um, that there's almost been this um, avoidance is it's too strong of a word because I don't think you're doing it purposefully but there was this jump it's almost like you're being so called and I feel like you feel so strongly that you're here to help people in this uh, in this lifetime that um, that there was almost like um, like you could feel that that was part of your destiny so strongly that you almost missed some of the steps of learning about yourself in between and so it's almost like um, I feel like you went so the progression of consciousness or your progression as a soul going through a, a an awakening or a transcendence process you move from the physical body in through the emotional body through the mental body and then you're connected into the spiritual self and so I get that there was this connection where you went almost right from the physical body into the mental body and I feel like there's this disconnect in the emotional body and your higher self was telling me that there is that um, that there's work that still needs to be done on your emotional body and what I'm getting is what I'm sensing is that your your most divine okay so your soul's purpose your soul's destiny in this lifetime um, if you don't go back and do the work on your emotional body it's almost like um, like you're gonna be doing things that feel so divinely aligned to you but it's it's not gonna be the most fulfilling work possible 
um, like there might feel like you're gonna fe feel so super fulfilled because you're helping people but there's almost gonna be a piece of the puzzle that's missing like it's not it's not, it won't feel like it's exactly what you're supposed to be doing. Like you're going to feel like maybe I should be running my own business or I should be doing this or you're going to have these ideas and you're going to maybe wonder why things aren't aligning completely. And I think it's because you haven't gone back and done the complete work on the emotional body yet. And you got so propelled so quickly because you felt so divinely aligned to that path and that purpose work of helping people that that you just there was a almost like something that was overlooked and so in the emotional body so I went through and I said okay that's great but you know she might have questions on that like what's the work she has to do on the emotional body and they took me through your chakras and they said basically in the emotional body um that there is a disconnect from so there's things that you've created personas around that aren't completely and you and and divinely uniquely you like um so they were showing me in the root chakra they were showing me all the shadow sides of the root chakra the sacral chakra the solar plexus chakra and the heart chakra and they said these four things you've created personas around or like archetypes or like masks different personalities and so these personalities will almost come into play um and when that happens it's like a component of ourselves that isn't isn't the most divine representation of who our soul is is acting out and doing things and engaging the universe in a way that that isn't it's like 90 percent us but it's not 100 percent us and so that's why they're showing me on a i think on a big scale that that you're not like you you're not able to whatever that is whatever that deep desire within you is it's not like feeling like it's completely met yet maybe and that's like the feeling that I'm getting so in in the root chakra the shadow side is the fear so there's something associated with fear in your life that that um there's a persona created around and it's an emotional tie and then in the sacral chakra it's um it's guilt and then in the solar plexus chakra the shadow side is shame and in the um, heart chakra is getting vulnerability but it's grief so something attached to grief and vulnerability or being vulnerable over something that was uh, that was attached to grief or something so it was those four shadow sides or some emotional something connected in there um, that 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 happened to you at some point in time in your life that you ended up creating this like persona to to act and be a certain way that wasn't 100% divinely aligned to that that soul essence that is you and so they're saying that that to to go back and do a little bit of the work on this and to start questioning those personas I think will um, allow the emotional body to be 100% in alignment with the physical and the mental and then when that happens for you you are 100% connected to your divinity and I feel like every day you live and do things it feels so completely uniquely authentically you and and it seemed like that was the message that they were trying to bring through for you so with light and love